I think you have to look at Web 2.0 in, uh, in a couple of ways. The first is, uh, how do you maximize the opportunity for people to express themselves? And the second is, how do you maximize the opportunities for people to access information? Because they're different sides of the same coin. And there are certain ways that Web 2.0 helps both of those sides. And I think that's something that we have to keep uh, an eye on. Uh, because Facebook is not only good for telling people what you think, but it's also good for finding out what people you don't know think. Uh, and you know, we're in the business of providing access to information, uh, and in doing so, giving a platform to people uh, who want to express themselves. The second thing that I think that Web 2.0 does is it gives you a kind of an exponential uh, potential for viral spread. It was interesting to hear this morning in the plenary session a little discussion about the rights versus responsibilities issue. And those are very difficult. Um, and many people are calling for an Internet um, uh, Bill of Rights, uh, a bill, uh, Internet Code of Ethics. Um, but as we talk about that, uh, whether this morning or in some of the other sessions, um, it's important to be thinking about whose, whose rights are we talking about? Are we talking about um, the rights of individuals pr to privacy? Or are we talking about the rights of individuals to freedom of expression? Or are we talking about um, the rights vis-a-vis -vis government, the rights vis-a-vis -vis other uh, individuals, the rights vis-a-vis -vis business? Um, very complex and interesting issues. Access to the Internet is expanding, as we all know, exponentially, driven, as far as I can tell, really by two things. Uh, one is the rise, uh, particularly outside of the United States, about wireless Internet access and the ability for people with fairly simple devices and fairly low-cost ways of, of having access to the Internet. And that is clearly in the process of transforming much of the world. The second is also at the risk of stating the obvious. Having, getting access to the Internet is both a, a physical phenomenon, getting physical access, but also an economic one. Is it worth it for me, a user, to access the Internet? That's a value proposition not unlike virtually every other customer-based decision that you make in your life. One of the things I, I've done since I left CNN in 2004 is I'm co-founder of something called Global Voices Online, which is an international citizen media network. And that is a real example of the power of Web 2.0 to enable people all over the world to speak truth to power. Um, and, and for ordinary citizens from Egypt to Iran to China to, to all kinds of places uh, around Latin America, to, to say things online and to get information out that, that media in those countries is not reporting. And, and uh, I was a journalist in, in China primarily in the 90s, and at that time, you know, if there was a, a, a disturbance that broke out in central China or something like that, you know, I might hear about it because some guy got a call in Hong Kong and then sent a fax to the news media. Now, you know, you, you, you find out about these things online quite quickly. Yet at the same time, what we're seeing is that um, I think sometimes we Americans can be a little naive about this kind of fantasy that capitalism plus Internet plus Twitter equals global democratization. And, and I actually, in some presentations I give, I have a PowerPoint that says capitalism plus Internet plus Twitter does not equal global democratization. Um, if you look at the positives, I think, you know, Web 2.0 has brought a maturity to the technology to a point that now it's engaging. It's bringing people together, not only here in the U.S., but technology developed in the U.S. is now helping freedom of expression being used elsewhere. There's pushback, um, but it's bringing people together, together, um, you know, with, with, with challenges. So I think that there's great potential that it's uh, expanding it, and it's creating new venues like videos, um, like Twitters that, you know, five, ten years ago we would have never have thought. So I think that... Um, you know, it's um, expanded, you know, free expression in a way, um, and it's brought it to a way where people are starting to talk about restricting it as well. Yeah.